Hello and welcome to this tutorial and today we're going to be focusing on Ray Studio 3 analysis and we're going to continue the conversation on the new software by focusing on one of the most important and most asked for features and that's the ability to be able to link Smartigam video files with data files that have been recorded using a logger or dash from AIM. Now today we're going to focus on two things. The first thing we're going to focus on is the ability to be able to bring the data into the software itself and more importantly bring the video into the software and what to be able to look for and make sure we know what's happening as that data is being brought in uh, for analysis. And then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to configure a view to make sure that we know how to analyze the data and video together. And so without further ado, let's get into Race Studio 3 analysis, which is where we are now. And it's important that we identify some of the key icons that we see within the test database. Now, we did cover this a little bit earlier on in the test database tutorial, but it's important to be able to focus on this for video because it will help us understand how to be able to get our data and video ready for analysis. Now, the first thing is, is that you may see an icon that looks like this, and that's just a movie file. And that means that's the Smartycam file, which has been gathered from that particular device. The next, which I'm sure everyone's seen is this icon, this represents data. But there's a third icon that you need to be looking for, which is this, and that's where the data and the video have been synced together by the software. And that's a really important aspect of being able to make sure that those two are together. If you wanna be able to see the full range of channels that you have from data analyzed alongside the video from the Smartycam. And I'm going to explain that in a little bit more detail as we go through this particular tutorial. Now it's important that we think about how to get the video into the system itself. And there are two ways of being able to do this. For many of us, we may have our data files on an SD card, or we may have them at a different location on our machine, our hard drive, than we do with our data files. And so it's important to be able to tell Race Studio 3 analysis where to go to be able to find those files and import them into Race Studio 3. To be able to just get the file in, one of the things you can do is you can click on this gear icon here and you can click on import. And you could either pick on a folder that has all of your files together or you can import the files one by one. And so if I import files here, what I'm gonna do is earlier on today in the quick access, I put a folder here called old Smartycam files. And interestingly, these are old Smartycam files. I found these on an old PC uh, uh, that was, uh, these are from five years ago. And I wanted to be able to see if I could import them and see what was on them. So um, I found those files and I can click on any of these. And if I do, and I'm not going to for the purposes of uh, speed as part of this demonstration, but if you import them, what you'll find is they actually came in here. You can see they were from uh, June, 2017. And you can see they're just uh, Smartycam files. And so we just see this little movie icon. And so when they came in, all I did was I right click, um, uh, or I right clicked, I should say, on the files, went to the properties and just added values here as to what they actually are. And so that's the first way of being able to import your files. Now the second, and this is the number one way that I would recommend everyone do this going forward if you wanna be able to analyze your video and data together, is to be able to import the Smartycam file like you would import the data file. And so to do that, you're actually going to Race Studio 3, not the analysis itself. And so if I think about Race Studio 3 here, this little icon is usually illuminated when you have a device connected, like your logger or your dash, or you've actually got your Smartycam itself connected, which you can actually use in this instance if you actually just connect directly to the Smartycam. But if you take the SD card out of the Smartycam and you grab it, and you want to import that data later on, just like you would do a data file, if you click on this, one of the things you'll notice is that my Smartycam is here. This is the SD card that's come from the Smartycam. And now I have the option of being able to download the files just like I would do ordinarily. So I can click on a file here. I can click on download. I can add in the information associated with that file just like I would do with data. And then that will show up in the test database where I've actually imported all of the data and the video together. Effectively, if there's a timestamp, they'll look like they do uh, next to each other. Now, one of the things that's really important is that if the system is uh, recognizing both files immediately, what it's gonna do, and I'm just gonna go back to Ray Studio 3 analysis here to demonstrate this, is that if it recognizes the files immediately, one of the things it's gonna do is automatically link those together. It's gonna to find the timestamp, maybe the GPS data, and it's gonna link them together so you don't have to worry about anything. And for the majority of people who are watching this 
uh, tutorial and you are using a dash, a logger uh, and a video, especially those that are downloading um, through Wi-Fi, one of the things you're gonna notice is that this is gonna do that automatically and everything's gonna be great. And the system's gonna find everywhere where it can find data and video together and automatically link them. But in some instances, you're gonna find a scenario where you will see the data and video together, but they aren't linked, but you know that they're the same file. This one's been recorded at the same time, same lapse, nearly the same um, particular lap time. And so the question is, is why hasn't it linked them? And there's only one reason right now, and I'm hoping by the time you watch this six, 12 months from now, this is a feature that has been updated by AIM in the software, but well worth noting today, if you happen to be using one of these, this is a data logger. Now, if you're using a data logger as part of your dash, uh, sorry, big pardon, your AIM setup, or your CAN network, your connected AIM network, then one of the things the system will do is it won't recognize immediately the data file and the video file together. Now, there's nothing wrong that's happening there. You can link these, and I'm about to show you how that happens, but it's important to note if you use one of these, be prepared to do what I'm just about to show you. Now, it's important for me that I continue to use this. I love this particular feature, this, uh, uh, SD card module because it means that uh, with a device like an Evo 4S where you have a sort of USB cable that you have to wrap up and hide every time you go out on track, this is a much easier way of being able to grab the data and only use the USB cable when you effectively need to be able to upload the configuration. It just saves a lot of time at the track, but it does mean you have to do this. So I'm going to go back to Race Studio 3 Analysis and um, you're going to see that these two files have come from a SmartyCam and they have come from an SD card um, that has been taken out of a memory module. All I need to do here is highlight here, hold down the shift button, highlight the second one, right click on both of those, and then there's an option here that says link item. So if I click on that, it says, are you sure? I am. So if I click on yes, and now all of a sudden what it's going to do is it's going to link those two together. And so now if I click back in there, these sessions have been linked together and all of the data which has been taken from the data download in terms of the racer, the venue type, the vehicle has been used to represent both those files linked together. So that's an important thing uh, to be aware of. It's something that I didn't know initially and I'm like, why are these two separate? But over time we deduce that this is the quickest way of being able to resolve that particular issue. And if it happens for any other case and you see a data file and a video file together, same time, same timestamp, same GPS, you can link them together. So that's important. So now we've got the data into the system, it's important that we start thinking about analyzing it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up one of these files and you're gonna to see to start off with that this is the view that I have set up. So I have something called the data video tutorial profile. I created this to leave it as sort of generic as possible. Now, if you're wondering how to set this up, don't worry, there are um, tutorials as part of this series, which help you set up all of these different views. In fact, the last one we just did really focused on customizing your own profile and experience. But what we're gonna have a look at today is looking at the video. Now, right now, there's no tab here for video at all. It's this custom video page. We'll get to that later. It's empty right now. Uh, but I just put that in there to be able to demonstrate the configuration. But one of the things you'll notice is there's this little icon that shows up here. Now, this icon mirrors the icon that was just the video file that was uh, when they were separate. If I want to go back down here, it represents the same icon here. But if I go here, you can see that that icon now appears. If you downloaded data from a device and you don't have a SmartyCam file associated with this, that just doesn't show up, so it makes life easy. So if I click there, it's going to take me to the point where now all of a sudden I have both data and video on the same page. Now this is a configuration that I've got set up for me. Um, so it's just remembered in the system, this is mine, but I'm gonna show you as we go through. And uh, for those of you who've been following along with this data tutorial series, you already know how to be able to customize your experience, but we're gonna talk about that as we go forward. But before we do, I wanna be able to have a look at some of the key elements uh, that are associated with the particular video file that you have. And so right now it's a single app that's selected. And if I move the cursor anywhere here, you can see that the video moves. So now the video and data are synced together so you can see exactly what's going on as you scroll. The other thing that's really nice, if you wanna be able to see a particular point on track, you can click anywhere in the track map. And so everything is synced together so that you can analyze the data wherever you want. 
Similarly, if you want to be able to zoom in on any particular area, the other thing you can do is you can double click here and it will take the video to that particular segment so you can watch what's happening through this particular corner as well. So again, you can see that information that's associated with that here as well. So um, a very nice way of being able to see the data and set up, but it really comes into its own when we start analyzing laps together, because what you can do is if you click on laps and you find another lap. So let's find one in here that's you know, a, a different sort of lap time. So let's say, for example, this one here. And so we've gone in a scenario where, um, you know, and we're not analyzing in this video, it's so tempting to get into analysis of the data, but I'm doing this as a tutorial to help get these things set up, is you can see now that um, if I go back to the channels and I make this one the reference lap, and I like this view. Sometimes this changes and people want to see different things, but I've always liked, and based on what we were taught in Race Studio 2 analysis, that the solid line is the fastest, and the slower lap, if it's slower, it's above the line. And if it's faster, it's below the line. That's the view I like. And you can just go in here and set a reference lap to do that. You can see there's things that we can learn. So let's say, for example, the first immediate sort of loss of speed is coming through cops. And so the question is, is why that's actually happening. Now, one of the things that we see here is the fact that if I didn't have video here and I looked at this, I'm at partial throttle coming into cops. Um, I break a little bit sooner than I do with the blue lap. Um, and you can see that the red lap slows quite a lot. And so if I only had video, uh, the, um, let's say, data, and I looked at it here, this is what it would look like. I'd be like, well, what was I doing here? I have no idea what's happening on track right now with the fact that I know what I've done as a driver. I'm telling myself, well, I overslowed. I came off the throttle sooner. I broke sooner. What's going on here? Now, we potentially could analyze that there could be a number of reasons that that's why. So we know where. We know what's happened in terms of, of time. We know why it's happened because the car's slowed and we know the driver's inputs because we know that they've slowed and they've uh, sort of overslowed um, uh, the car in this particular corner. But the question is, is if we had the ability to demystify another variable in this, would we be able to do so? And the answer is yes, because now we can start seeing why that's happening. In this instance, you can see that the reason being is that there was a car directly in front of me. And if I were to play this video through, one of the things you can watch the inputs on both sides. So if I click on play here, you can see that as we go through here, there is a slightly different application of throttle. You can see if I look here now that I'm a half throttle here, I'm at full throttle here, almost full throttle here. There's a five mile an hour delta that is there. And it's because there is a car in front of me here that has meant that I've had to check up a little bit because I might have worried that I was going to uh, drive into the back of them or I might have worried that uh, I wasn't doing a particularly good job of being able to manage the draft. All these things came up as we're looking at this data. So now the data has demystified that particular aspect. And that's the beauty of data and video together. And we're going to get into that in later tutorials to be able to have a look. Now, the last thing I wanted to be able to show you in terms of customizing a view is that video is just another option for you to be able to add as you build out your custom uh, views. And remember from the previous webinar, you can add anything you like. So if I go to this custom view page, I've set this up by clicking this button, by the way, you can set up any kind of custom view that you want to be able to set up. And right now I've got nothing in there. So uh, if you remember from the previous video, I can right click on here, add a panel. And if I say on the right, now I have the option of being able to customize this view. So if I click on choose, now this movies section will start to work. If you remember from previous tutorials, if you have um, the ability to be able to set up a custom view, which everyone does, it will show you all the options here. And movies will be there, but movies will never work unless you've got a smarty cam attached. So if I click on movies now, there are the movies that are there. And it's a nice big view on the screen and we could have just that if we wanted to. But if I right click here and I click add panel and I wanna add it to the top, here I can choose, let's say, for example, I wanted the time distance, which we're just having a look at. I can add that in there. So now I've got this view that is showing me this in this particular view. So you can customize it however you want and move the video. You can have it in different views. If you want to have the video stacked, totally an option for you. You can remove this panel and then you can add panel to the left. Here I can click on choose. Now I can pick on the time distance again or anything you want to put in here. And now the videos are stacked and now you can just move these and adjust them as you see fit. So, so many things that you can do to be able to customize your own particular view. There are a few other final buttons which are useful to know on here. The first is if you wanna be able to watch the entire video all the way through, click on this particular button here and it'll take you into your actual system. It'll just play the video like a normal video so you can watch the whole thing all the way through. And this button allows you to be able to trim and clip 
um, the chunk of video that you have here and cut and export it. So if you just want to be able to select a section of the video and use that to export, the system allows you to do that there. Beyond that, the rest of the value of the video comes from the analysis and we're going to approach that at a later date. Now I'm going to leave you with one final thing and this is like a secret that not many people know. And that is, if you have a Smarty Cam and you only have a Smarty Cam file, you still have all of the data that is being sent through the Smarty Cam stream from your configuration to that particular Smarty Cam. So you have the data there. So let me show you what I mean. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna close this down. I'm actually not gonna save this profile just in case I have to make this video again because I cough or stutter or there's noises outside. And I'm gonna close that one there and I'm gonna go back down to these video files that I found from five years ago. And so what I can do is I can open them up and you can see that uh, right now there's some channels and things that don't make sense and that's because it's a different vehicle. So it just so happens that I have loaded um, and created a Spec E46 and for anyone who uh, recognizes this car, this is a Spec E46 that I used to own when I lived uh, in the US. And here you can see that there's this data. Now where's this data coming from? Well, anytime you have a SmartyCam stream, so anyone who's got a SmartyCam and who's set it up so that the dash is sending information, remember it doesn't send all the channels, it just sends a selection of channels. All of those are being logged and recorded in the video file. And when you've got a video file, you still have that data available to you. Now the uh, capture rate of that data isn't as frequent as it is in the dash and the logger. So you can see it's a bit jaggedy here rather than a nice smooth line, but it still allows you to be able to analyze the data in a number of ways. Here, for example, I've got the track analysis. I've got a split times report. Um, I've got a sector analysis, which I set up all of these. Don't worry about how these are set up for me because they're custom to me. You can do them however you want. But the thing you'll notice is that I also have this button here. I can load this up and then I can go back in here and I can actually analyze these laps together. And so you can see, for example, that the same information is available to me that we just had a look at. That if I'm looking here, why is the blue lap faster through the carousel? Well, this could just be a, a driving technique thing that is here, but it's actually costing me time as we go through that section. And so I can double click here and analyze this data as I would need to, just like I did anything else. And so it may be associated with the fact that there is a car right here. Analysis will allow us to find that. But what I'm actually showing you right now is just a Smarty Cam file. I'm not showing you anything else. And so if you've just got GPS data with your Smarty Cam file, you will have that. You can notice here that I've got GPS speed. It'll allow me to do the split times report, allow me to do the sector analysis, all things associated with the time. And if you're sending data, it will allow you to be able to log in and see what the driver is actually doing. Now, ideally, you have the data from the data file from the logger as well. That's something which gives you more power, more integrity of the data in terms of the uh, uh, fidelity of the data. It's not integrity of the data. It's come, come from you, so it's, the integrity is fine. The fidelity of the data is better. The frequency of the sample rate is there. But at the same time, it at least allows you to be able to analyze a file. And in this case, I was just clicking away, just finding out data that I'd lost from five years previous. With that, I'm going to say thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Hopefully it wasn't too much um, in one particular file. I'll put chapters in so it makes it easier to be able to focus on certain areas. But from this point forwards, now we're going to start using all of the configuration of the software we've done to be able to start analyzing the data, whether it's data and video, whether it's video on its own, whether it's data on its own. And so stay tuned for more uh, tutorials. If you like this, please give it uh, a thumbs up. They'll just help make sure it shows up for other people. Subscribe if you want to see more videos. And with that, I'll say thanks so much for watching.